Hello, my name's Anne Eady. I'm an acne researcher working at Harrogate District Hospital. Today, I'd like to share with you the results of our study on acne treatment guidelines. Increasingly, healthcare providers rely on treatment guidelines to inform care delivery. An assumption of trustworthiness is implicit. However, there are different types of guideline and it's not always easy to identify those which are rigorous, transparent and bias-free. Two previous critical appraisals of acne treatment guidelines, published up to September 2013, found them to be of variable quality. We set out to critically assess the quality of more recently published guidelines. We also sought to determine whether the use of a validated tool, commonly referred to as the Agree To instrument to assist guideline preparation, resulted in improved quality. To identify guidelines published since the earlier appraisals, we conducted thorough searches of bibliographic databases, guideline depositories and the internet. Guidelines meeting our inclusion criteria were independently assessed for reporting quality using the Agree To checklist. We averaged our scores for the six domains of Agree To and reported them categorically. In addition, two of us assessed each guideline against the criteria of trustworthiness published by the United States Institute of Medicine. We also assessed the number of red flags per guideline, indicative of potential bias, out of a maximum of six, as described by Jan Lenser and colleagues. Our searches identified eight guidelines from three continents. Of these, four were evidence-based and had conducted a systematic review. Five were funded by the pharmaceutical industry. Only two had been externally peer-reviewed and only one rated the quality of the evidence using a validated method. Development groups comprised wholly or mainly dermatologists. Only one included a patient. Two had used the Agree To instrument during development, but as we shall see, this didn't have a large effect on guideline quality. In the slide shown, a traffic light system has been used to summarise Agree To domain scores. Green, depending on the shade, means good or excellent quality. Red indicates poor quality. There were few high scores, just six out of a maximum of 48, and far more intermediate or low ones. The two guidelines shown in italics had used the Agree To instrument during development. The lowest scoring guideline was from China and the highest scoring from Canada. When each guideline was assessed for trustworthiness, trends were similar. Very few criteria were fully met, as shown by the paucity of green dots. Several guidelines didn't satisfy or didn't address multiple criteria shown by the numbers of red and orange dots. Overall, the best performing guideline was again the Canadian one. Most revealing of all were Lenser and colleagues' red flags indicative of potential bias. All of the guidelines raised at least one red flag and three guidelines raised five out of six. The guidelines which had used the Agree To instrument during development, shown in italics, raised four and three red flags respectively. When looking at each criterion separately across the eight guidelines, the areas of greatest concern were sponsorship, conflicts of interest and lack of external review, each of which raised six red flags. Our study has shown that guideline developers consistently overlook the views of patients. This is a serious weakness which we hope will now be urgently addressed. We also found wide variation in rigour of development, transparency and overall trustworthiness. This raises the issue for all clinicians of which guideline should I follow? We suggest Lenser and colleagues' red flags can easily be applied by any healthcare professional to rapidly assess the risk of bias. However, they don't address methodological weaknesses. In summary, quality assessments of eight recent acne treatment guidelines were universally disappointing. Use of the agreed to instrument during guideline development didn't have the expected impact on quality. There is considerable room for improvement in all areas in order to increase trustworthiness and minimise the risk of bias. Thank you for listening.